Dementia is pretty common among older people, most of them being 65 years older, but it appears that the prevalence of dementia is increasing in people younger than 65 too. According to Alzheimer's Disease International, dementia affects about 10 million people every year, which means that someone in the world develops dementia every three seconds. Some of the most common causes of dementia are aging, excessive alcohol consumption, tobacco smoking, heart disease, hypertension, traumas, diabetes, certain infections in the brain, tumors, and some others. But did you know that something seemingly as harmless as painkillers and something apparently completely irrelevant to the brain like acid reflux medications can contribute to the development of dementia? That's what many modern studies suggest. So today, let's learn about some of the most common medications and remedies that can cause dementia. What makes them do that? And what should you do if you want to reduce the risk of dementia because of them? Number 1. Benzodiazepines A team of researchers followed about 2,000 men and women older than 66 years who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and 7,000 others with the same age groups but without Alzheimer's. The researchers tracked their drug prescriptions for around five to six years and noticed that those who have been taking these drugs for three to six months had up to 32% higher risk of developing Alzheimer's, and the risk went up as high as 84% for people taking these drugs for more than six months, compared to those who didn't take any. Benzodiazepines are basically a class of drugs typically prescribed for treating mental health conditions, such as insomnia, anxiety, and seizures. These include diazepam, fluorazepam, lorazepam, alprazolam, also known as Xanax, and some others. These medications interfere with the normal brain function, reducing overall brain activity. What's even more concerning is that, being drugs, they create a physical and psychological dependence, particularly for someone who's taking them for a long time. So discontinuing those drugs wouldn't be easy, making the situation more complex. So, what should you do? Talk to your healthcare expert about the safe alternatives to benzodiazepine. Another good option is to get therapeutic alternatives, like cognitive behavioral therapy, which can be extremely effective in treating anxiety and depression. Never stop taking medications on your own. Discontinuing such prescription drugs, especially after a long time, will increase the chances of withdrawal and may even increase the severity of your condition. So be careful and talk to your healthcare expert for a smooth transition to alternatives. Number 2. Tricyclic Antidepressants These drugs include amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and doxepin. These medications are used to treat depression and sometimes as a supportive medication for insomnia and chronic pain. These drugs work by increasing the production of norepinephrine and serotonin, both of which have a crucial role to play in pain relief mood improvement, and sleep induction. Sadly, according to studies, they might also increase the risk of dementia. This is mainly because they also prevent the production of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that plays a key role in cognitive function, including memory and learning. We'll learn about it more in the next section. Anyhow, one study analyzed data from over 300,000 people and concluded that prolonged use of antidepressants, including tricyclic antidepressants, might be linked with a higher risk of dementia. It suggested that the greater the dose and longer the duration, the higher the risk of dementia. It also suggested that these drugs should be prescribed with caution in both middle-aged and older adults. To avoid these risks, Talk to your healthcare expert about whether you can take SSRIs or SNRIs, which might be safer than other classes of antidepressants. Number 3. Anticholinergics These are a class of drugs that are commonly used to treat many health conditions, including allergies, an overactive bladder, abdominal cramps in IBD, common cold symptoms, and even COPD. Some of the most common medications in this class are diphenhydramine, oxybutynin, chlorpheniramine, and several others. They essentially block the action of acetylcholine, which is basically the neurotransmitter that's crucial for cognitive and muscle function. In simple words, it triggers a nerve cell to send the message, whether it's about controlling muscles or cognitive function. Similar to the benzodiazepines we mentioned earlier, 
Taking this medication over a long period has been linked with a high risk of dementia. Studies show that taking anticholinergics regularly for three years or more is linked with a 54% higher risk of dementia than taking the same for less than three months. So, if you're taking anticholinergics, discuss its potential risks with your healthcare expert and talk about other safer alternatives for you. For allergies, cetirizine and loratadine might be safer than others. For an overactive bladder, you may consider mirabagron and pelvic floor exercises. And for gut-related conditions, consider taking herbal supplements like peppermint capsules or antispasmodics like mebeverine. Don't make sudden changes in your medications and don't skip any of them without consulting your healthcare expert first. Number 4. Antipsychotics Antipsychotics are different from antidepressants in the way that, rather than increasing the production of certain hormones, most antipsychotics work by blocking the production of dopamine. Antipsychotics are used to deal with psychosis symptoms, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and delusions and hallucinations in general. Anyhow, antipsychotics associated with a higher risk of dementia include clozapine, haloperidol, and risperidone. If you're taking them, talk to your doctor about adjusting the dose or getting safer alternatives. They might suggest taking SSRIs like sertraline and citalopram or mood stabilizers. Number 5. H2 Receptor Blockers These are commonly prescribed for the treatment of GERD, acid reflux, ulcers in the stomach, and sometimes for ulcers in the intestines. Some of the most commonly used ones are ranitidine and famotidine. These medications work by reducing the amount of stomach acids, preventing further damage to the stomach or intestinal walls, and relieving symptoms of acid reflux. But studies are actually a bit mixed up about H2 receptor blockers and their link with dementia. Some studies, including the one conducted in 2020, suggested a higher risk of dementia in older people taking acid suppressants. Another study published in the same year denied that possibility. So no final verdict can be given yet in favor or against H2 blockers until newer studies confirm either of those effects. But it still sounds like a good idea to be cautious, because stomach acid suppressors in general can also interfere with or prevent the absorption of certain nutrients crucial for brain health, especially vitamin B12. H2 receptor blockers are available over the counter, so think about these risks before buying them and never exceed their recommended dosage or take them for prolonged periods. Number 6. Statins these are mainly used to help lower LDL cholesterol. A 2021 study in which a team of researchers analyzed 36 studies showed that statins might be closely linked with dementia in older adults, with dementia risks increasing in people taking high potency of statins compared to those taking low potency. Atervastatin, rosuvastatin, and simvastatin are considered high-potency statins while pravastatin and fluvastatin have relatively lower potency and might be a safer option. But remember that medications like statins that are used to manage chronic conditions like heart disease are still important because their desired benefits outweigh the potential risks and side effects these could offer. So never quit taking or changing those medications without discussing them with your healthcare expert first. Number 7. Anti-epileptics these include medications like phenytoin and valproic acid, which are commonly prescribed to treat and manage epilepsy. Among these, phenytoin primarily stabilizes and potentially lowers electrical activity inside the brain, preventing seizures and reducing the risk of serious complications associated with them. On the other hand, valproic acid is aimed to increase GABA production, which is a neurotransmitter that acts like a switch that stabilizes brain activity and in simple words, tells the brain to just calm down. But this effect also affects how the brain processes other information going in and out, including things that involve cognitive function, like memory and learning. Probably that's mainly why some studies have linked prolonged intake of anti-epileptics with dementia, suggesting a higher risk of dementia, especially in older people and the ones taking those medications for longer terms and in high doses. So it's important to talk to your doctor about these potential risks 
and get yourself checked regularly to detect early signs of cognitive decline, if any. Number 8. Proton Pump Inhibitors Like H2 blockers, PPIs, including omeprazole and esomeprazole, lower the stomach's ability to produce acids, and hence, its ability to extract essential nutrients from the foods you eat, especially vitamin B12. Shockingly, some studies even showed that with prolonged use, PPIs might increase the levels of beta amyloid in the brain, which is the same protein that's often high in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. Again, these are available over-the-counter, so many people overuse them without realizing their potential side effects, including the gut's reduced ability to absorb nutrients and a higher risk of dementia. So avoid taking PPIs regularly for too long and consider supporting your gut health with natural remedies, such as baking soda, which works like an antacid, probiotics for a healthy gut microbiota, and ginger for indigestion. Number 9. Opioid Painkillers As of now, the latest research about opioid painkillers and their link with dementia was published in Feb 2024. Study experts analyzed data from over 1.2 million patients with chronic non-cancer pain, including 21,800 opioid users. It concluded that opioid users had up to 15% higher risk of developing dementia compared to those who didn't take opioids. Opioid painkillers include drugs like oxycodone, codeine, hydrocodone, and morphine, and are often used to treat severe pain after surgeries or chronic pain in certain health conditions. Besides being drugs and their risk of creating dependence, prolonged intake of opioids has been linked with dementia. In fact, some studies show that these drugs can potentially reduce the volume of gray matter, particularly the areas related to memory, learning, and decision-making. Number 10. Hormonal Contraceptives These contraceptives, particularly oral contraceptive combination pills such as estrogen and progestin, have been shown to be linked with an increased risk of dementia in women. The risk has been shown to be increased with the duration of the therapy. So ladies, proceed with caution. Check out these videos too!